it's Mariah, and welcome to Calvary Conversations, where we simplify God's Word to reach today's culture by casting down arguments through real, radical testimonies and biblical conversations. Now let's get started. Welcome to Calvary Conversations. My name is Mariah Riley, and today I'm here with my big brother, Pastor Morgan Roders. Morgan, can you tell us how you're doing today? What's up, Maybe guys? Give us a dad joke. Yeah, I'm doing all right. I'm doing well by the grace of God. I don't have any jokes for you. They normally just come on the fly, so I don't want to force anything, yes. you know. So Morgan's I'm a dad well, now, though. so they yeah. they come more naturally. Now and you're a mom. Are there such thing as mom jokes? Mom jokes. <laughs> no, I just think people laugh at moms. Like when they're playing sports, now people laugh at me. I used to be cool not really but cool. now i'm a mom so uh that's yeah. left but i'm happy to be a mom and um i think we didn't actually show the girls in the podcast but they were in the mm. podcast once but i have my baby girl micaiah joy and then micaiah's and I, cousin yeah eliza daughter. ray roters so yeah. yeah she is turning nine months soon so yeah i can't yeah. believe how fast it's flown by so yep and yeah. we did a video before, but we never posted it. But just why we were gone is because I was on maternity leave. So it was just, well, not maternity leave, but I was pregnant and I was very sick and I just needed to take a break. But we're back and mm-hmm. yeah, my baby girl is like four months old and mm-hmm. is Eliza f- eight months? Yeah, they're nine. like I just said months. that. You didn't listen to it? I kidding. wasn't listening. I was just too focused. <laughs> We're kind of nervous. We haven't been here in a while, but uh, Morgan's going to give a quick prayer, and then we're going to start with the Q&A. So. All right, let's pray. Lord, we just thank you so much for this time, and I just pray, God, that you'll use this time, and you know, as we answer questions, that it'll be according to your word. Even if it's not clearly written in Scripture, that you'll lead us to the right principles of your word, the principles that we should apply. I know that a lot of questions that people have are things that uh, you could call gray areas, but God, we know that uh, there are certain things that you're black and white on, but then there's also things where we have, there's freedom, but God, we don't want to use our Christian freedom to indulge in sin. And so God, I pray that we would be pleasing to you in the way that we live our lives and pleasing to you even in the way that we answer these questions. And that will be helpful and beneficial for us and for your people. So we love you, God, and we ask for a continued uh, blessing upon this time. And it's in Jesus' mighty name I pray. Amen. Amen. All right, so I'll be the one asking the questions, and then we can go back and forth with answering them. But I'm going to yeah. need some help, okay. so you got to help me. Yeah. I'll try my best. But <laughs> we are going to answer your questions that you guys sent in through Instagram. I put like a little thing where you guys could ask your questions. We have a few from there. Facebook. So I got a lot from like my family members and people I haven't seen in a while. We have uh, some on our church app on Subsplash. So you guys sent in your questions there and through email and word of mouth and stuff like that. So we're excited to answer them today. We might not be able to go in depth with all of them because we don't have time for that, but we can also do a specific podcast if we see you guys comment and say that you want to hear more about a specific one, like maybe tattoos or something. We do a whole podcast on that and we can maybe even get a guest that could talk about it. So Mm -hmm. just let us know and comment down below. All right, so the first question, uh, we're not gonna say people's names, but uh the first one says can you talk about alcohol use or other addictions as a christian and health societal consequences a lot of christians misuse verses to justify alcohol addictions like jesus drank alcohol he also turned water into wine so i can control my addiction addiction etc maybe what do you do if you have a loved one or family member with addictions so it was a Mm. long question but yeah it's talking about alcohol use or any addictions drugs pornography anything like that um and what to do when people misuse scripture and justify like oh i can do this because jesus did this but we have to really see what the word says about mm-hmm. these things so do you want to start off with yeah any verses so explaining? yeah ephesians five eighteen says do not be drunk with wine yep. And uh, there's some versions that say, which is dissipation or 
it says that this would ruin your life, mm. but instead be filled with the Spirit. So, you know, people say, and I agree, it's not wrong to drink alcohol. I don't recommend it because it's it's usually hard to to stop and it's easy to get addicted to. Um, but it says, do not be drunk. So mm-hmm. that that seems like there's an addiction there. And so it's not just alcohol, right? We're not supposed to be addicted to anything gambling yeah. pornography you know i even like to check myself with coffee and you know give mm-hmm. it up for a few days and see if i get a headache or something so it's like we don't want to be addicted to anything but christ and i know that's hard to it's hard to just tell someone to stop their addiction right so that's why first they need to make sure that they admit that they have an addiction or that they have a problem right and then you you just show them what the Word of God says. You show them that all any addiction, unless it's God, is going to have negative side effects, right? Yeah. So being addicted to God, that's a great thing because there's no negative side effects. We're supposed to be, you know, consumed by Him. We're supposed to be, He's supposed to be the center of our lives, not alcohol, not, you know, weed or pornography, nothing like that. And sometimes we can even be addicted or or idolize i know this is kind of going into something else but idolize good things we talk about how you can idolize family and put that before god so nothing should come before god nothing should just overtake you unless it's the holy spirit right Amen. that's what we want to be filled with so that's why ephesians five eighteen says that so yeah. Yeah, anything else before i yeah i know that a lot of people also use like it like the question was saying that they use verses like well jesus turned water into wine and it says to give a little alcohol for your stomach like i forgot where that is yeah paul says that to timothy but that was you know back in the day their water wasn't as good and Mm -hmm. you know alcohol would kill some of the bacteria so he wasn't saying go get drunk timothy right and so he's not saying go get addicted to this We live in a different time. We have, you know, I drink reverse osmosis water, right? <laughs> so we have clean water. Even if you drink tap water, it's much better than what they had back then. So don't use that as an excuse. And and Jesus wasn't saying, okay, I'm just going to make wine so everyone can get drunk, drunk. No, it was a celebration. And it's not wrong to drink wine, no. but it's if you get addicted to it and if you get drunk, that's a problem, yeah, right? It says exactly. not to do that. It says for kings and rulers not to do that not, uh, because kings could forget the law. Yeah. And what's the law for us? The word of God. We want. We don't want to forget it. So none of us should want to mm-hmm. get drunk or be addicted to things because we're not in the right mind when we have these substance, substances overtaking us. Yeah. So, yeah. And I like how my dad used to always say is that what we do – in moderation usually kids will do an excess so like him as a youth pastor he knew hey these kids this is something they're really struggling with is addiction to vape and wasn't that back then but you know back in their day crack and just kidding weed (laughs) it's the same thing um alcohol you know like hey i just drink a beer you know and it's no big deal and it could be like a social thing for someone i'm not saying i do i'm just giving an example but if like your youth kid said hey mariah do you drink and you say yeah and they don't understand that you do it in a setting where it's you know controlled and you're not at a party and going crazy and and other people that's one of the biggest opioids i guess to ruin families is alcohol like addiction to alcohol and so my dad he knew that that was a big thing in his family and so we never really had we never had alcohol in the house growing up and that i think really helped us to not crave it or want it I mean, still kids are going to be interested and want to do that, but just teach them in a way that, hey, what is your why? Like, why do you do it? I sometimes understand why people do it at parties because parties are awkward. Like sometimes you want to feel loose and comfortable. So Mm -hmm. people do that. But really, if the Holy Spirit is controlling us and the Holy Spirit's inside of us, we should get that confidence from the Lord. And sometimes that lack where some people have to fill it with a drug or some type of pill or something we should be able to ask god like what is Mm -hmm. that in me and what can you feel maybe some of the fruit of the spirit or something Mm -hmm. like that but also 
I love the verse that says, uh, I think it's, yeah, 1 Corinthians 8, 13. And it talks about, um, it's so frustrating. I did that one version and it's. I'll let you look it says for there, it. Oh, sorry. It says, yeah. therefore, if food causes any of my brother to stumble, I will never eat meat again so that I will not cause my brother to stumble. And right here, we're not talking about food. This is a drink. But even if alcohol causes someone to stumble that you're willing to give it up that shows that something's not an addiction is if you're willing to give that up if you're just like it's almost like the cool look like you think a cool macho guy like is holding a beer and barbecuing or something to give that up and for the sake of like your why like why are you doing that is it to look cool and just mainly everyone has different convictions but mm -hmm. you also need to not just do things without asking mm -hmm. the lord why because you could be causing someone to stumble so that's why it's not something that we it can say like oh drinking you can't drink or whatever but we just ask that if you're a youth leader here at calvary mm -hmm. valley to be willing to lay that down it's a right you have but to be able to lay that down yeah. and, and if I, you're psychologically dependent upon something yeah and, you know, I think part of the question was, what if someone says, well, I can control my addiction? Yeah. Well, if it's an addiction, you can't. that means that you can't control it. Maybe you can stop it for a few days or even weeks or months. But if that's something that you're constantly focusing on and, and you're just consumed with and you're just like twitching, if you don't get and it, like then that's a, a problem. Yeah. You know, some people say, I can give up this, I can give up that. But then when you press them to say, okay, well, it's causing problems in your family. It's causing yeah. problems with your relationships. So you, I think you should give it up according to what God's word says yeah. about, you know, the family and about putting God first. And then when you encourage that and they freak out, then you're like, okay, see, it, you're addicted to it. You can't yeah. let that go for the sake of Christ or for the sake of your family. So you know it's controlling your life. Yeah. So yeah. Beer is a brawler. It makes people crazy and do things they don't want to. Probably but should move on. We're gonna move on. Yeah. But another thing to go with it that we can do in a separate podcast. Sometimes people give up one addiction for another. Like Morgan said, like coffee, or some people, video games is a big one. Um, again, making sure you're not putting any of these things before God. And we can do a whole podcast. I think we should do a whole podcast on video games itself, um, and how someone gave this advice. They said. Men, video games, just know that that is the rune to your marriage. Like, if you're addicted to that. Mm. Because think about it. At least if you're doing other things, you can, like, talk to your wife or if you're, like, watching a show together. When you're playing video games, you're just, it's all consuming. Mm -hmm. No help. You can't hold, yeah. like, the, nothing. You're just, and so. That's why our parents said, like, when we play <laughs> yeah. video games that we, Let's if we do, you know, you limit it, but also play all together, you yeah. know. And and, and then together. at that time, <laughs> it was always hard to pull each other together, you know, sometimes. So we just wouldn't even do it. And yeah. it, it was just it seemed like a waste of time at times. Yeah, so, seriously. yeah, you could use it in a good way, but you have to really limit it. And then if it starts becoming an addiction, cut it off for the sake of Christ. Right. Yeah. So, Amen. Yeah. All right. Next question. Um, yes. Okay. Next one? question is the pro-life stance on birth control, IVF, and surrogacy. So this one is definitely a touchy subject, but we go, you know, with what the Bible says. The Bible yeah. talks about how we were knit together in our mother's womb, you know, fearfully and wonderfully made. Psalm 139, just talking yeah. about like knowing every scientist even knows that life starts at the moment of conception. So yeah. just that alone shows that we need to be careful with sometimes taking matters, I believe, in our own hands. Morgan, one of the notes for this question was like, just look at what Sarah did with Hagar. <laughs> that was back then yeah. surrogacy. So anyway, you can go in more depth. Yeah. But just my thoughts of that is everything. We go back. It's not our opinion because that's yeah. where it can get touchy because maybe you are a child of, you know, IVF or maybe you did that or maybe – surrogacy and i see mm -hmm. really good stories that come out of it and beautiful things but then we also see things that are very bad mm -hmm. and very sinful yeah. and wrong so yeah so you really so with these issues um back then you know in the biblical times they didn't have all these contraceptives yeah. and all of that so the bible doesn't speak super clearly to that but we do know 
uh, you know, like Mariah was saying, we do know when life starts at conception. So that means when the sperm and the egg meet and it's fertilized, or I think they call it a zygote, that is when life is formed. So any killing of the baby after that, that's murder if we're mm -hmm. intentionally doing that. If it's natural and, it, you know, the baby dies and you didn't do anything to do that, you know, it's just that's what happens. That's a miscarriage, but that's not like intentional murder. And so, you know, and if we believe this, if we're consistent, the sad thing is a lot of even Christians that I know, pro-life people aren't consistent in their mm -hmm. beliefs. So, you know, to for me personally, and what I know about the Bible and what I, the little I know about IVF and stuff, um, so in vitro fertilization, so that's where, Right. They take they take the sperm and then they take the egg of a lady, put them together and then then they put it back into the lady and she's able to carry that baby. But what they have to do usually is they they do a lot of those things or I don't know how many, do you know, I, I don't yeah, know a I ton know. about it, but so they fertilize a bunch of eggs. Yeah. And then what happens is that either some of those are frozen Mm -hmm. So, you know, it's kind of like you're abandoning your child or because we believe them. that life is, is you know, at fertilization or at conception. And so if you just take one of those and then you freeze the others or you use them for scientific research and stuff, that's you're doing that to a human life. Yeah. And I don't think a lot of people understand that, but that's why we need to share that. So. Personally, I believe that maybe if IVF, if you did one egg at a time mm -hmm. and you just, you know, focused on that mm -hmm. and you didn't have a bunch of them frozen or yeah. you or murdered later, mm -hmm. then I think that's that could be a possibility. Yeah. But all of this, you have to pray. You have to be in agreement, too, with your spouse. Right. It's mm -hmm. not just if you're like, oh, I believe it's right. But, you know, my spouse doesn't know. You need to both agree and pray about these things and pray James 1 5, which says, If anyone lacks wisdom, let him ask of God and he will give it to him. So, Amen. so these issues, like we said, they can be touchy. I know that maybe even pro life people in our church mm -hmm. can struggle with that or be like, Oh, I think it's okay, you know, or, or, so even another question. So, you know, certain contraceptives and stuff, as long as it's preconception, mm. that's something that you need to pray about, you yeah. know, family planning and stuff, making sure that you guys are in agreement. But if you get unexpectedly pregnant yep. or if anything after conception, if you try to abort the, <laughs> I was going to say well, abort the mission or thing, abort yeah. anything that's like that. Right then I believe that's wrong because if we're consistent and if we believe life starts at conception, then you can't terminate it even though you're like, well, I'm not really doing an abortion. I'm just taking a, uh, what, plan B pill or something. Mm -hmm. No, that's that's not the right motive. That's yeah. not the right heart. And even birth control, like certain birth controls are uh, is abort, abort efficient or something. I don't know. It's I don't know. That some word that someone was telling me about some even iud's that people thought were fine or even ones that were like yeah. oh they're non-hormonal but yet they're finding research that mm -hmm. it does you know yeah it makes it where before i think there's grace you if you truly didn't, didn't know, know you know course. it's not like but once you do know you know <laughs> do something about it change it god bless you Sorry. so it was cool because there's someone in our church who did ivf yeah. And she only had one egg. Yep. And, you know, and now we have, you know, they have a beautiful boy. And mm -hmm. so, or do you say beautiful for boy? <laughs> a handsome, <laughs> handsome, handsome man, man, right? But, uh, mm -hmm. so, you know, there are ways, but yeah. you, again, you have to pray about this. Yeah. If you're convicted about it, like I would be convicted to, to do that. So I wouldn't do it, you know, and, and I pray that, you know, we haven't had to talk about that by the grace of God, but you have to talk about that with your spouse. Yeah. Make sure you're on the same page. Yeah, I definitely so. think that that's one thing before you get married to talk about your spouse of yeah. like, 
how are you going to, you know, space out your kids or like if you're going to do birth control or not or natural family planning or how many kids you want. Like these are things that ruin marriages because they went in thinking, oh, of course they want to have a lot of kids and they don't. And these women are wrecked or the men are sad because the women don't want to. And so really make sure you figure that out. I think yeah. we should do a whole podcast on that in itself about yeah, all that a lot. stuff. Yeah, there's because a lot. Yeah. Because it's if you think about life, human life and a child, you know, they're formed in the image of God. Yeah. Even if, you know, it's in vitro, even if they're out of the womb for a time, that doesn't change that they're a life, that they're a human, right? Even like we say with abortion, your location doesn't make you a human. Yep. Like if you're in the womb, that doesn't mean you're not a human. And then once you pop out of the womb, now you're a human, right? Mm -hmm. Same with in vitro fertilization. So if we believe that, then we need to make sure that we don't encourage, you know, freezing a bunch of kids or abandoning them or giving them up to to be experimented on. Right. So, yeah. yeah. And I think that there's so many verses about God opening and closing wombs. So I yeah. think the first one to obviously ask who Satan doesn't create babies, only God does. And he did that with like Hannah and he did that with Rachel and he did that with so many people in the Bible where. Or Michael, he closed her womb so she couldn't have kids. Or I think it was when Sarah was Sarah was taken, like Abraham's wife, then all of the one Pharaoh's guy wives couldn't have children. Like God controls mm. that. And it's not saying that you're in sin if you can't have kids, but um, maybe God wants you to adopt or I don't know, all these things. So just ask God and ultimately yeah. you have to Yeah, make sure yeah. you're listening. And some to his people voice. get really really into it and they say like you shouldn't do anything to to try to control anything mm -hmm. it's up all up to god and yeah it is up to god but even in wisdom, something though. like in vitro fertilization god can still make it not work you know exactly. so so it is still up to god but that's why with these gray issues so there's very clear parts of it like you know, conception, mm -hmm. but then, you know, whether or not you should use a contraceptive or do IVF or whatever, that's something that you need to pray uh, with your spouse about, and you need to talk with God about that and ask him for wisdom. So, yeah. and the oh, next thing was sur surrogacy. Yeah, um, like I don't hear a Hagar. lot about that, right? I yeah, just but saw someone who did that, and I like it was a big thing on social media just showing how this one woman did surrogacy for this other lady who is a Christian, but she hasn't been able to have kids. So, but the one who was the surrogate, her husband was completely on board and it was for this woman who they tried like everything. And yeah. so she carried the baby and their friends and all that. But the concern that most people have is like, yeah, but that is, even though it's not like, See that, it's, it's, that one, it, you also still take a Hagar yeah. thing where you're like, yeah, it's like I have I have compassion baby. on those who who can't, you know, the the husband and wife who can't conceive naturally. Yeah. Um, but yeah, this one, this one's tough for me because I mean maybe you could do it in a godly way, but the the thing that throws me off and that makes me cautious about it is that. Marriage is between one man and mm -hmm. one woman, mm -hmm. and a baby is supposed to come from them, right? Yeah. And so when you you know put the the fertilized egg into which is a human, right? When you put that into another mm -hmm. woman, then that brings a third person into the into yeah. the mix, and you think, oh, they're just carrying my baby, and then then it's ours, right? But like you like we said with Sarah and Hagar, it, it's a di it, it's a little different, right? Because Sarah's Sarah's egg wasn't a part of that, but you know they were. That was that caused a lot of problems. Mm -hmm. But if you if it's you bringing if you're bringing in this third person, think about that connection. Just naturally, whoever carries the baby has yeah, a connection a special connection to that baby yeah. right and so it could cause confusion it and could for cause the child, pain the child's like yeah. confused and like it's i like, want the mom that birth like i don't know and but there's just too many too, questions like yeah. you know when does this parent get to see how when does 
the one who carried the baby get to see the baby and when does the the mom get to see you? Is, there's so many things really that wrong, confuse you you know the when i really think it's wrong and there's no question about it is when there's no emotional thing and they're just strictly doing it for money that's a terrible way to get money where people are yeah. just doing it so it's like i need money so i'm just gonna do this i think that's I don't yeah. think that's right, and I think there's. Or I think uh, it could be wrong. So it it really, funny. you really you have to check your motives on all of this, right? And there's some things that are sketchy in in general, but really check your motives because there are some women who want a surrogate mother because they just don't want to get pregnant. Like they don't yeah. want their body to change. They don't want. So that's that's vain, though, right? Yep. You're you know. God created your body to be able to do that. And things do change. But if you want a child, then we go through the these things. We go through these sacrifices, mm. right? Yeah. So that one, that one's tough for me. I, but I know, and I want to have compassion on those who have a hard time conceiving mm. naturally. But there's so many questions that yeah. you need to answer. And you need to pray about. And so, yeah. Amen. All right. Uh, can you talk about tattoos? Is it okay to get them if you're a Christian? So this one mm. is something that I think a lot of people, you know, can either be very loose about or very, yeah. very, very strict. So what I mean by loose is like you see Christians rigging tattoos of like women who are half naked or like weird things that are like, Basically, I don't even know if they are a Christian because they're kind of weird and dark or even hmm. satanic or weird stuff. And so the question is, like, are they actually a Christian? I don't think we should be looking at the world and judging them for having tattoos because they're in the world and they don't know better. And if you were in the world before and you got tattoos yeah. that were ungodly or stuff like that i mean pray about either getting them removed or covered over like i see some yeah. people can get them covered if it's like a half naked woman and you're now married and you don't mm. need that i would definitely cover that yeah. as in like ink and covering it or getting it removed um let's or go things to that the are verse satanic too. the verse that people quote right away if yeah, they're leviticus. like i'm against against tattoos they quote leviticus 19:28. Mm -hmm. Do not cut your bodies for the dead or put tattoo marks on yourselves. I am the Lord. So so this is the Old Testament and like we know that God didn't, you know, just completely wipe out the Old Testament. He came to fulfill it. But we're under grace now, right? And so but the the principle here is not so much the tattoos. If you look at it it's, it says, cut your bodies for the dead or put tattoo marks on yourself. So this was a pagan practice. This was worship to a god. So if you're doing that, yeah, yeah definitely don't get a tattoo. But if, and if it's anything to not glorify the Lord, if you're just glorifying the world and pagan religions, yeah, don't get that. That's wrong. But you have bigger problems that right? you need to. So all these things, like Mariah was saying, People go to the extreme of legalism, saying no tattoos, right? You're not saved if you have a tattoo. I remember praying for a couple, and they had tattoos, and then this lady came up. You know, she was from another church, and she was like, you guys are in sin. You have tattoos. And I was like, whoa, like, hey, let's talk mm -hmm. about this. Like, mm -hmm. And so it was just really sad because there are new, uh, new believers, and so they were very discouraged. And I was trying to encourage them and say, no, you know, that's we're not supposed to. Well, if you have means, any tattoos yeah. that are satanic or think, you know, repent and do your best to get them removed or covered. But, yeah, it's like if you already had that before Christ, that doesn't mean that you can't be saved. And so I believe that you can have a tattoo, uh, you know, but you need to make sure that it's not uh, it's not satanic. It's not anything that's glorifying the flesh so if it's not done in faith and there's a verse that talks about that if it's not done in faith then it's probably sin if you're questioning like should i get this tattoo mm -hmm. like is it really good and if you're questioning usually if you're questioning it it's probably because you know it's wrong right mm -hmm. um so you could go legalism or some people say antinomianism which means like they focus on christian freedom but sadly 
the majority of the time they just focus they don't really focus on the christian part they just focus on the freedom part all right it's like kind of the people who say who get drunk and they're like grace 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 brother right that's wrong right so we need to make sure not to be legalists and saying if you have a tattoo you're going to hell but also not to be just on the freedom part and abusing the grace of God. So, yeah. I mean, technically yeah. you'd be in sin, Morgan, because it says in the verse before <laughs> that, it says, do not trim off the hair on your temples or the side of your head or Uh-oh. trim your beard. So, yeah, technically yeah. Morgan would be in sin too. And that's like the point too. And what Mariah is saying is because, you know, Jesus he, completed, he fulfilled the law exactly. when he died on the cross. But um, that verse, where was that? That was in Leviticus. That 19, was the verse after oh, nineteen twenty-seven, right before. So, if we took all of these things, then we'll see that, like Mariah was saying, we're in sin in a lot of areas because we don't follow every part of the law. Still, you know, so the law again against tattoos in the Old Testament is not binding upon us as Christians and those of the New Covenant, right? So, Amen. yeah, but yep. don't get satanic ones. Don't do anything nope. weird like that. Don't do anything. And even if it's not glorifying to God, but it's not satanic, really question, Why? should I get this? Why am I doing this? To fit in. What's my motive? Yeah. Am I just trying to be cool? Mm-hmm. Like, why are you doing that? So yep. that's exactly. the question of the heart. Yeah. Amen. All right. So the next question. Uh Okay, is Solomon saved or lost? And so this is talking about King Solomon. And ultimately, with anyone, I think I think a quote is like, we're going to be shocked who's in heaven and who's mm. not. So we don't know. But I think they're referring to that because Solomon, right, he was the one who asked for wisdom. And he was very wise and had, right, great wealth. This was King David's son. This was the son of of when you know he slept with Bathsheba this not the son, there's a child that died but Bathsheba yeah. was his mom and at the end though right he acquired many wives and that was what he shouldn't have done and that was a down that's a downfall for a lot of men who you mm-hmm. marry can or women who you marry as a man um especially because they're from they have pagan gods and then they bring those into so hmm. Do you want to explain more of like the end yeah. of Solomon of why it could seem, mm-hmm. but yeah. yeah, because when you look at Solomon, he was very wise. Yeah. But then you're like, why wasn't he wise enough? Yeah. To not follow in into what his wives were doing into pagan idolatry and setting up idols and places of worship for them and actually, I think he he did that too, right? He kind he was involved in that himself. And so you're like, how can this guy be saved? And the same question we had uh, just this past yesterday, Wednesday night, we were talking about a lot. We're like, how can the New Testament call this guy righteous when, you know, he was calling this mob of crazed homosexuals his brothers or when he uh, gave his daughters to the this mob, right? He offered them up. Or, you know, whatever his sins were, we're like, Mm -hmm. how can he be called righteous? (laughs) But that's because of faith, right? And that's because of the imputed righteousness of Christ. And we see Lot in the Hall of Faith. Now, some people might say, but Solomon is not in the Hall of Faith. But there are a lot of, you know, strong Christian men and women that didn't make it into the Hall of Faith, right? It says that if you listed all of them, you know, it would just be too much. So... But let me read you a verse um, about Solomon. This is what God said concerning him. It says, I have chosen him to be my son, and I will be his father. Hmm. So from this, we could surmise that Solomon was saved and is in heaven today. So we're not the judge, though. So you might have an opinion whether he was saved or not. You know, when I used to think of this as a kid, I was like, it doesn't, it doesn't seem like he ended well. It doesn't seem like he was saved. But then I read Ecclesiastes and you see the brokenness. You see what sin does, right? It just feels vain. It just feels empty. But then what did he say at the end of it? Uh, I think I wrote that in the notes somewhere. Ecclesiastes 
uh, I believe it was Ecclesiastes 12. Where does it say? It says, basically, you know, he comes to the end of his life. And tell me if you find him right. But he comes to the end of his life and he's realizing everything's vanity. Mm-hmm. Except, and he tells you to do this. at the Fear Just God. look at the very end of chapter 12, I believe. Fear God and obey his commands. So, verses 13 and 14. So, Ecclesiastes 12, verses 13 and 14. So, that's the meaning, right? That's what we should do. We should glorify God and fear him, obey his commands. Just like the New Testament says, if you love me, you'll obey my commands. So, Solomon, Mm -hmm. we can't make a judgment call, but it seems like he could be. I I think he could be saved, Uh, you know, even though... He fell into sin. I mean, we've all fallen into sin. And you could say, but his sins are bigger than mine, right? Mm-hmm. I, I didn't blatantly worship this or that. But we do, you know, sometimes idolize things or put things before God. And that's a form of idolatry too. So realize that there's grace, that there's faith. And, mm-hmm. uh, and you know, like Lot and Solomon, hmm. they, they probably are in heaven. We don't know. God knows the heart he's the only one who truly sees the heart we just look at the fruit but it sounds like solomon probably ended well even though he was down but he mm-hmm. said fear god and obey his commands yeah. you know and god yeah. calls him his son too so amen yeah all right um should we answer any more maybe the one on social media or worship which one i have some other ones uh, you could pick. Sorry, you're, the, just... you're the question lady. All right. Um, we'll answer the social media one later in the worship one, but we'll do the one about elections because we just, mm. we're willing you guys all voted. Yeah. Um, but this question says, during an election, if one of the candidates is a Mormon but has conservative values and says he puts God first and the other candidate doesn't hold conservative values and isn't about American values or christian morals which candidate should you vote for so Mm, yeah what would you say i mean we had this come up before um there was yeah there's candidates and one of them was a mormon but he had more conservative values more values in line with the bible right and so but i thought mormons were christian yeah that's another topic yeah it's another video and yeah so Mormons are nice people. They do a lot of good works, but I believe that they're they're wrong, right? Yeah, they they might have the Bible, but they add to the Bible. They change things. The Jesus that they talk about is not the Jesus that we talk about. And they try to say they're Christians, but they're not. But that doesn't mean that we can't vote for them. If they're the best one on the ballot and if they have the most values in line with the Bible, which, you know, usually they have a lot of principles that they've taken from the bible then yeah that's i would vote for them over some a leftist or someone who you know wants socialism or you know wants things that i don't agree with or that the word of god doesn't agree with so yeah uh, romney was another example uh i haven't followed him but it sounds like he got a little weird nowadays i don't know Mm -hmm. but but compared to the other candidates at a time he looked like his values looked better, right? So we always say as long as Jesus is not on the ballot, there's not going to be a perfect candidate, right? So people are like, oh, so do I have to pick the lesser of two evils? Mm -hmm. Well, yeah, you do, right? Because, you know, no one's perfect and no one's going to align perfectly with your values, but pick the one that aligns most or closely to your values and hopefully your values are biblical right Amen. so yeah i think i know that the election uh just passed for what this guy was asking it for but mm-hmm. there's going to be future ones yep. and i encourage you guys to vote even man i hear so many people say oh it's rigged i'm not gonna vote <laughs> no that's wrong you have to do, do your, your duty, duty even if it is rigged god yeah. sees your heart do your duty. It doesn't even take that long, right? You just fill in some bubbles, right? But vote and make sure you do that based on biblical values. And like some people say, vote so big that it's hard to rig, rig, right? You can't rig it. Or if they do, 
it's going to be clear to everyone and everyone's going to be furious and yep. going to change it right so amen yeah yep. exactly did you already say that unless jesus is on the yep. ballot voting for lesser of two evils yeah. so all right so um i don't have a lot of time but the other questions were mainly from some other mamas that i know on stuff but it was about like pregnancy for me and all that stuff um but i can mm. do another podcast you guys have to comment down below if you want that but i don't know if that would be of interest i know that th those are so interesting to me before i got pregnant um i was already like so interested in people's birth stories and stuff mm -hmm. and then when i got pregnant i probably watched so many birth story or birth videos and vlogs and stuff <laughs> but um all i can say about Vel like Veli, that's Morgan's wife right there. Mm -hmm. She gave birth unmedicated and she, I saw the video was like very G rated. It was just like the side and you didn't see anything, but just <laughs> seeing her push out Eliza and this is Vel who is just so gentle <laughs> and sweet, yeah. but yet she was able to push out that seven pound baby. Yeah. And it was just, Morgan was there with her and it was just so mm -hmm. beautiful to be able to see that. And then mm -hmm. And she then you was do the same thing. Yeah, yeah. Then I, Lord willing, like, I mean, by God's <laughs> grace and strength Lord that I was able to also do it unmedicated. That was something that I always yeah. tell people. My only advice that I would give anyone before they give birth is be right with God. Because when yeah. you're in that much pain, you want it to be where when you're crying mm -hmm. out to God for help that he can hear you because <laughs> you're not in any sin or you're not hiding anything and that you're just right with God because ultimately he's sovereign and he can control these things and not saying nothing mm. bad will ever happen, but just at the end of the day, you can know, Hey, if I had to get an emergency C-section and that's not what I wanted, I'm in God's will. So, and I'm right with him. So that was God's will. And mm -hmm. so I was so thankful that I was able to see my sister-in-law do that. And my mom, she birthed all four of us kids, like unmedicated and all that and she would always tell me she's like mariah you can do it you don't need to get an epidural and i was like no mom i'm gonna get an epidural i don't even want kids and now i'm all gung-ho of like if you can do it naturally yeah. labor is labor it's supposed to be art it's supposed to be painful but the verse that um maybe you can look it up morgan but vel would quote and that's when she had in her mind is just talking about you know a woman after giving birth like all the pain going away because they see their child and that's so true like i would give that to anyone me being like my dad says a tough baby i'm a baby and i'm weak but yet i my dad was there and my husband was there with me and my sister trinity and i had a doula so i recommend people if you mm. can have a doula who can support you through that John 16 21 yeah can you read that that's uh, a good yes verse of see. encouragement for ladies ah it came up and then See, this is why it's good to have a paper Bible yep. because technology can't trust it. Can can glitch. So you said John sixteen. John sixteen twenty one. John Let's sixteen see. twenty one. Okay, I'm here now. It would be like a woman suffering the pains of labor when her child is born. Her anguish gives way to joy because she has brought a new baby into the world. Mm. So mm. yeah, it's like you push through you go through the the pain and then you have the joy and you forget all about the pain right yeah and then so you true. have another one right another and one. i like how you said that because you know it's good for any type of thing your mindset yeah you know what you think knowing that it, uh, it kind of reminds me of like resisting temptation if you're like no i can't resist temptation no one's resisting temptation i might as well just give into it or everyone's looking at pornography right i hear guys say that all the time even to pastors they're like oh you know everyone looks at pornography like it's a normal thing but that should not be normal right and so even with pregnancy it's not wrong to get an epidural it's not wrong to do no. this or that but you know i like how you know they want to push through that and try and to say you know i'm gonna do my best and i'm gonna give it to god and i'm gonna ask him for strength and so yeah. You know, just that mindset, I think where, you know, a lot of times just with other areas with temptation, I'm thinking mostly we're just so weak nowadays. We just look at everyone else, mm. do what everyone else is doing. Yeah. Right. But as believers, we're going to have to be different, going to have to be weird. I know that's Amen. a little tangent. No, no, no but that's yeah. true because we're in Philippians. Well, we actually just finished Philippians with our 
Um, sorry, I'm looking at the wrong camera. We were in <laughs> Philippians for our it's Thursday Women Bible study <laughs> and Philippians 4.13, which was on my mind the whole time because I'm like, I had all these verses that I <laughs> thought I would remember, but it was that one verse, was it, which was I can do all. I still am like, what camera do I? <laughs> I can do all things through Christ right who strengthens me. And that's what I kept remembering because that was a verse that my mom taught me always as a little girl. And I can, I was like, I can do all things through Christ. I can do all things through Christ. And so yeah. it was just simple as that. And then my another question. So I'll just read the questions that people but gave. But think about but you need that encouragement to do anything in life, yeah. right? <laughs> to follow Christ in this world, you know, to fight yeah. the good fight. We need that encouragement, just like you have a doula or you have those mm -hmm. around you who who love you. That's why we need to be at church, right? To yeah. encourage one another to keep going for Christ. So, Amen. Yep. Yeah. And another thing what which it talks about in Philippians is like thinking about things above. Like if you're looking at everyone else and how bad it is, like Morgan was saying, you're going to get scared and you're yeah. going to be in that fear comes in and then pain comes in. But I think just being able to worship the Lord through your pain and mm -hmm. how I looked at it is even in moments now where, I mean, this sounds funny, but like popping a pimple off your back. To me, that was <laughs> so painful and I'd scream, but it is really mental. It's like what you think about and just being able to think about something else, like being yeah. able, like the world talks about meditation and they talk about hypnobirthing, which is all new age and weird. But if you're meditating on the word of God, that's a godly thing principle that's something the lord tells us to do is to meditate yeah. on his, on things above and to think about you know things that are pure yeah, that's lovely, why Bell right, had that admirable. laminated thing yeah. where it had verses and, yeah. and goals and, you know things that you know biblical things that she could in the darkest time or the hardest time transition that she could look at that like she was ready she was ready to say okay yeah just What's the Give thing they the do? Epidural. Oh, break the water. Break the she water. was like, okay. She was almost going to do that, but she took a breath, mm, yep. read those scriptures, and then she Amen. was like, okay, yeah, I can keep going, you know? Yeah. So, and then, like in anything with life, we need yeah, to. Yeah, exactly. So, just the questions, and then I can either do another video or whatever, but we kind of already answered them. But it says, all things pregnancy, birth, and postpartum related, which, yeah, that's, I think, a whole other video. How was it for you? kind of answered it was supernatural because it was from the lord and i was just i right after i was like i want to have another one so if you see me pregnant <laughs> again it's because i like having supernatural babies. like one word or two words super natural both <laughs> <laughs> supernatural <laughs> and supernatural um and then birth control which we kind of answered but that's a whole mm. nother podcast because i have my own view on it um mm. how many kids Birth story advice about um, being a mom, dozen, right? what you learned from motherhood. And so that's another podcast in itself. I have to get some mamas on here that have been a mom longer than I. Um, and then it was, how did you get your baby girl's name? And mm -hmm. so I'll just maybe say that because I love that because yeah. it kind of goes in with some things. And I'll go quick. But Micaiah is M-A-K-I-A-H. And my name is Mariah. And I do not mean to do it that it was close to my name but um i heard that name from a youtuber and i was like that is the prettiest name ever and that's how my mom got my name she was at buffalo exchange and she heard two teenagers talking and say hey mariah you should try this on so it was just funny how <laughs> i i got her name by hearing it too and i thought it was beautiful and then i looked it up and to what it, it meant and micaiah is in the bible and it's spelled differently but micaiah i think it was one of elijah's disciples but it was like in, I think, either one of the first Kings or something, 22, and then in like second Chronicles or something. But Micaiah was in the prophets and he was like sarcastic. And but yet he was very bold hmm. in speaking the truth. And I just love the story of Micaiah. So if you want to read about that. But also Micaiah means um, who is like God, because it's like Michael, if hmm. it's like the same thing. But my favorite verse is in the whole Bible or chapter in the whole Bible since I was like in high school, I think has been Psalm 18. So Psalm 18, hmm. uh, it's Psalm 18. Oh, I just moved it, but it's Psalm 18 verse 20 or verse 31. Um, and it is, I'm sorry, we're going to have to edit all this out because no, I, it's okay. <laughs> well, real quick, Eliza, yeah, you share Eliza's. Hebrew means uh, pledge to God. So mm, I love that. Yeah, we heard a Christian singer uh, 
named Eliza and we're like, oh, we like that, you know? Yeah. So, yeah. Eliza King is the Eliza, artist, yeah. which I love her music. Um, all right. So Psalm 18 and it's a verse. I thought I had it, but then <laughs> anyway, Psalm 18, verse 31. Uh, and Micaiah oh in the Bible wasn't just sarcastic. Yeah. The reason why he was, was because there was, there were hundreds of prophets telling this king, oh, you're going to win, go to war. And, and the king didn't want to hear from Micaiah because he always tells the truth. And mm -hmm. usually the truth was bad for this king. So <laughs> he's like, oh, I don't want to hear what Micaiah says. But he knew he was kind of like, okay, well, I want to hear the truth. So bring him in. Mm. And he was like, oh, yeah, you're going to win. Yeah, he was being sarcastic <laughs> like the others because he knew the king didn't want to hear the truth. Yeah. But then the king's like, tell me the truth, you know. And then he, he told him that it wasn't going to be good. So yeah, and he was that's why. Yeah. Um, but anyway, see, this is my mom brain right now. But yeah. Psalm 18, verse 31, it says, For who is God except the Lord? Mm. Who but our God is a solid rock? God arms me with strength and makes and he makes my way perfect. And so who is like God is the first thing it says, or who is God? And that's what Micaiah means. And her nickname, Kaya, means God is my strength which is also in that verse. And then strength is from like Nehemiah, where our strength comes from, which it says the joy of the Lord is our strength. And that's mm. Nehemiah 8, 10. And so that's her middle name is joy. So I love that verse. The joy of the Lord is our strength. And mm. my dad would always joke. He's like, I should have named your middle name joy because you're not always that joyful. Because I was always <laughs> cranky and Grumbling. Always said, choose joy, and man. Then, yeah, yeah, and so now naming Micaiah's middle name Joy, I definitely see that joy in her. She's like always smiling and yeah. so joyful. So, and I really believe that, like what you name them, because you see that in the Bible, mm. like names really had meaning and it yeah. was like, so anyway, mm. I just love names. I love, I have all, I have like eight girl names picked out and eight boy names. <laughs> I love names. And Ryan, sometimes just for fun, I'm like, okay, can we just go over the names? And he's like, Yes, you can if that makes you happy. But it's just fun to just see different couples and some people like how the it sounds or the meanings or that's biblical or that they're all the same letter. But anyway, you can tell I love babies <laughs> and names and all that. But yeah. so hopefully we got most of your guys' questions. I know that we didn't get to answer well, we all of them. I think we only one. had like two more or something but we yeah. can always do another q a we can do a specific video like one video for just a specific topic and get into more depth and stuff like that but mm -hmm. i think that's it yep. we are so thankful that you guys join us on calvary conversations um morgan do you have anything before we close up or anything you would like to share no well actually i lied <laughs> yeah like recently the thing has been on my heart and i think the leadership's heart here is just apply the word, right? Amen. You know, just encouraging people to actually live out the word. You know, these, all these questions even, even though they might be more gray questions, look what the word says, pray about things, let God speak and see the principle in the word of God and, and do things out of faith. Don't do things just because you feel like it, right? Pray seek the lord and apply the word of god so amen so i encourage you guys to dive into the word of god more than ever before amen so yeah all right well thank you so much for joining us on calvary conversations if you haven't already please make sure to like subscribe and share this video uh, if you would like to listen to us wherever you get your podcast just type in calvary conversations and also you can follow us on instagram at calvary conversations and yeah send in any questions you guys have or anything like that and make sure to share this video with your friends or family members and i think that's it thanks so much guys and god bless see you guys Woo!